When the Great Recession of 2008 hit, I was a national sales director and corporate trainer in a leisure tourism company. The nation was in crisis and it was a time of fear. People were losing their jobs, their houses, not being able to feed their families. Businesses were going out of business. As the sales crashed at our own company, I knew it was my responsibility as a leader to do everything in my power to inspire my team to act, to be better, to achieve beyond their wildest imaginations. And I did everything I could think of to motivate them to sell more. Gave them bonuses, incentives, trained them on sales techniques. None of it worked. You see, we missed our financial goals by a lot. And it was devastating to fire friends and colleagues that I cared for deeply. It made me sick to my stomach to know that I had failed as a leader. I realized that even though we had trained them to sell, something was missing. They knew they were responsible for hitting their own goals, but either didn't care or know that they could make a difference in the lives of others. Prior to crisis and change smacking us in the face, as it always does, we had not prepared them to lead. We had not invested the time, effort, and resources into making them leaders, helping them see themselves as being able to make that difference. A failure of this magnitude was an identity shock. It marked a transition from the old way I saw myself as a leader in relation to others to a new apprehension of who I was and who I could become as my future best leader self. That's what an identity shock looks like. <laughs> now you see, developing leaders is so important I decided to dedicate my life to it. I chose to sacrifice my career, my corner office, my six-figure salary, to go back to school to get an MBA and a PhD in leadership. I made it my mission to make every student, child, and worker transformed into tomorrow's leader. And I've learned a lot along the way. I believe that every single person, each of you, can become a leader by focusing on the three pillars of leader development. Being, which is our leader identity, how we see ourselves as leaders. Knowing, which is our intellect, what we know and how we think about leading. And doing, which are instances where we practice being a leader worth following. I believe that leaders are born to be made. See, we are not born a blank slate, rather an unfinished piece of leader art that takes time, effort, and dedication to become a masterpiece. Surely there are people that are trait-like and have genes that make them more likely to lead. Things like extroversion, proactive personality, a willingness to challenge conventional wisdom, and even breaking a few rules. But if you don't have these traits or these genes, does that mean that you're not going to be a leader? Of course not. And if you do have these traits and these genes, does that mean that you're absolutely going to be a leader? Of course not. You see, we can tell you all day long about the traits and the genes of these great past historical leaders, but even in telling you what to do, how to do it, when to do it, to be like them, if you do not see yourself as a leader, you will never attempt to practice what you have learned. See, because developing leaders is a growth process. Where from a very early age as children, we form mental models about who we are as leaders, what leadership is, to being at a place where we form our identities and distinguish ourselves as leaders from others. To as we age and we start to engage as workers, we begin to fulfill collective 
purposes. And then we advance at some point to become expert leaders to where we integrate the various aspects of our identity and pair them with different approaches to leading so that we become more effective leaders in more contexts. Because expert leaders think critically, creatively, and strategically. They coordinate and collaborate with others to get work done and to create value. There's no magic moment when that happens or whether you will or will not advance to certain stages. We're all trying to be better. See, I get the distinct privilege of watching this happen every day of my life. A few years ago, my beautiful wife and I had two amazing children. And that comes with the responsibility of growing with them, alongside them, to be good and decent human beings. And if we can do that, then it's very likely they will also become great leaders. We are intentional about creating instances where the process of identity formation and thinking as a leader can begin. So I started applying the universal principles of leader development to my children. One fall day, we were out with some friends and we communicated a vision of what the holidays could be like if we had the great pumpkin. And we gave him a goal of finding a pumpkin for his friend. And you see, there it is. That's the moment my son became a leader. He turned without me cueing him. He grabbed his friend's hand and away they went to the pumpkin patch. And you can see that his friend is willingly following because it takes a follower to make a leader. And he grants him the role of leader in that relationship. Each of these moments is a teachable moment, a moment for reflection where we can mentor and guide someone. And I sat next to my son and I had the old dad talk and I said, son, in that moment, you were a leader. You know. And he's all charged up, he's fired up. I said, you understand, it's just that moment that makes you a leader, that's all it takes. And I encouraged him to integrate that aspect of himself throughout his life because that was a major identity shock that will help him progress forward. And he's all excited. And in this grand, glorious moment where I put years of education and consulting into practice, into being a parent, and he's looking at me and he says, Dad. And I said, yes, son. And I'm expecting him to give me an epiphany. He says, I have to pee. <laughs> he said it. He said it. Now, I am fully aware that at three years old, he has not cemented a leader identity. The point is, as parents, my wife and I engage our children with their environment in the role of leader time and again, time and again. And as they age, being a leader won't be something that they do. It will be who they are. Now, when my children become students, it's up to our education system to create and deliver curriculum that is designed to cultivate their capacity to lead, to allow them to take command of their leadership journey, and to surround them with a support network where they get instantaneous developmental feedback from people who want to see them improve the quality of their lives and the lives of others. And when those students become employees and they join our workforce, it is up to our executives, our organizations, our human resource professionals, managers, to honor their motivation to lead, not suppress it because they lack age, experience, and wisdom. They need to create opportunities for them to practice leading so they gain experience with age and become wise leaders. And we need to create gaming scenarios where they can 
try and fail over and over and over and again and again and again without fear of losing their job. But you see, we don't do that. We say things like, if you want it done right, you need to do it yourself. Now, you've said that, I've said that, and from a leader development perspective, it's fundamentally wrong to say because every time that you do something yourself, you skip an opportunity to teach someone else how to do it and you fail to lead and they fail to understand what being developed as a leader is. You rob them of the opportunity to say something like, I am a leader, follow me, and for others to say, I accept you as a leader. Now I believe the greatest gift that you can give someone is to see within them the leader that they cannot see for themselves. Investing yourself into another human being happens in moments that you don't even see coming. One day, my son and I were foraging for salmon berries. Now, salmon berries grow in bushes, and we were in Alaska, and these bushes are about five feet tall. Well, I guess I'm a little taller than that. So about five feet, nine or so, okay? And he's still around two and a half feet, and I'm foraging for berries, and I'm giving him all these berries, and we're eating it up, and berries everywhere, right? Great. And when I could see no more berries, I said to him, okay, son, it's time to move on. And he's staying, and he's pointing up, and he's saying, berries, berries, berries. And I was sure he was wrong, but at his persistence, I turned to him to tell him we needed to go, and he keeps pointing, berries, berries, berries. And I get down, and right in front of my eyes are about 50 juicy berries. <laughs> Literally, the low-hanging fruit. You see, we can learn from people of all ages if we just allow them to lead us, allow them to share with us their perspective. Looking down from where I was, I could see no berries, but from Gordon's view, the bush was full. Here I was thinking I was leading him. Turns out, he was leading me. And as we develop them, we grow and advance in our own leadership. We transform those skills and who we are and we use them in our professional and our personal lives to lead our families, in our education systems, in our religious institutions, in our PTAs, our little leagues, any group which we are a part. And the payback to society is huge. Why? Because a rising tide lifts all ships. People who learn to lead make everyone around them perform better, believe that they can achieve. Imagine the power that we could have, how much better the world would be if we drew out the leader from within every person of all ages, cultures, ethnicities, at every level of every organization. I've learned a lot in that decade. I research leadership. I teach it to my students as a professor. I created a leader development company with my wife. I see leaders being made every day in students, my children, family members, community, nonprofits. Leaders matter. And if I can do it, you can do it too. Start by making yourself a leader and then bring someone along up next to you in their leadership journey. You see, because you matter and you can lead and your leadership matters. And the next time you see an aspiring leader, I want you all to repeat after me. Are you all ready? Can you repeat after me? Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Okay. Here's what I want you to say to those people. Leading is something everyone can do. I am a leader. And so are you. Thank you.